Hello, my name is Brent Marmo. I am the Technical Director at Site Engineering Consultants. This paper on operational noise from offshore wind turbines was first presented at the ComSol Multiphysics Conference at Cambridge University on the 18th of September 2014. The drivetrains in offshore wind turbines produce vibrations that travel down the tower and into the foundations where they radiate away as noise. Now that noise can be detected by marine species and it may affect their behaviour. Marine Scotland, who are the regulatory authority for building wind farms, have to consider this operational noise and the way it may affect marine species. Now turbines are built on a variety of different types of foundations and the actual type of foundation may well affect the noise that can be is produced by the wind turbines. And Marine Scotland were interested to know how different foundations that they are receiving in planning may affect marine species. It's very hard to go out and measure this in the field because it would be very rare to find the same exact same turbine set on different types of foundations in exactly the same conditions. So this provides a very interesting modelling challenge that can provide some valuable information. Quickly a note about Zy Engineering. We're based in Edinburgh and we have clients throughout North America and Europe. We're focused on vibration and acoustics and we work along across a variety of sectors uh, including the renewable sector, oil and gas and some of those other ones you can see there. We're also certified consultants with uh, Comsol, one of three in the UK and 34 around the world. The modelling strategy we used was to build a what we call a near-field model uh, using Comsol multi-physics and then extrapolate those near-field results into the far field. So we're going from around about 50 metres out to tens of kilometres. The model that we build in Comsol is a fully coupled structural acoustic model. The structural domain comprises the foundation and the wind, uh, wind turbine itself. We use solid components to model the blades and the nacelle, and we use shelves to model the tower and the foundation, depending on the foundation type. As I said, it's fully coupled, so the vibrations in the solid domain imparts a pressure wave onto the acoustic domain, and that propagates away as noise. There are three, three types of foundations that we modelled. The one on the left here is a monopile, which is a hollow cylindrical steel structure that is piled into the sediment. The middle one is a jacket. This is very common in offshore oil industry, uh, and it's a latticework steel structure. And the third one we modelled was the found as a gravity base, which is on the right here. Often they're concrete structures, often they're hollow and they're towed out to position and then filled with um, sediment and aggregate to make them sink and they just sit on the seafloor. The noise source comes from the drivetrain so there are a lot of rotating pieces of machinery that vibrate and that vibration moves down through the tower and into the foundation and then away sound in the water. Now we're looking at, we're most interested in frequencies that are audible to marine species so we're looking at uh, at least above 30 hertz or higher. Those components m are mostly related to things like gear meshing, so it's the actual gear teeth in the gearbox clattering together. Also there may be effects uh, in the generator such as electromagnetic effects causing vibrations as the stators and poles interact. Other vibration sources may be rotational imbalances and there's also blade paths will excite the structure, though that tends to happen at quite low frequency and we're not too interested in that because it won't be in the audible range of marine species. Here is an example of how we model gear meshing in the wind turbine. We're using a what we're using is a generic five megawatt wind turbine that we're placing on each of our three different foundation structures. And in our generic wind turbine, we've got a fairly generic gearbox. It's a three-stage gearbox, um, starting with a planetary stage and then two further step-up stages. Um, the gear teeth mesh in our wind turbine at 25 hertz, so that would be the planetary stage, at 80 hertz, which would be the intermediate stage, and 360 hertz, which would be the high speed stage. We're modelling in the frequency domain, so each of those frequencies are, and also the multiples or harmonics um, are placed in the correct geometric position and also over discrete frequency bands. The geometry of the foundations we used are shown here starting with a gravity base on the left. Uh, it is a solid structure um, and we measure the centre of it as, an, as being filled by a dense aggregate of sand. 
Now that's important because it's a granular material which imparts quite a bit of damping on the gravity base itself. So we're also including the effects of damping. The middle structure here is the, is the jacket. It's steel structure, steel ladder structure. We use shell elements to model it and it is again piled into the sediment so we're also modeling, uh, modeling the sedimentary pile as well. And finally on the right is the monopile. It's a fairly simple geometry. It's a four meter diameter cylindrical steel structure that again is piled into the sediment and bedrock. Here are some of the examples of the near field model results. Uh, we've selected a few frequencies um, because they're important to those particular uh, foundations and also they produce the prettiest pictures. You're not too surprisingly you'll note that the center on the jacket um, sound field is probably the most complicated which is due to the complicated geometry that's interacting with the water and you'll also note not surprisingly that the highest sound levels are very close to the foundations themselves. We extrapolate the near field results for tens of kilometers into the far field using a Gaussian beam tracing code called ACT UP which is produced by Curtin University from Perth in Australia. The beam trace code models two-dimensional vertical sections and what we do is we model the vertical sections at 72 angular positions around the foundation of the wind turbine using and we use the near field sound pressure at each of those angular positions as a source term. In this way the directionality observed in the near field models is transferred into the far field. We then collate the sound fields for 16 different wind turbines to calculate the cumulative sound field coming off of an offshore uh, wind farm. And you can see here at the center of those six black dots, they represent the positions of those turbines. What we're looking at here is a sound field for the 50 hertz one third octave band, and you can see the directionality. In this example, we're looking at a depth of 14 meters below the sea surface, and we're looking at sound pressure level relative to one micropascal squared per hertz. And you'll note the directionality. In this example, the wind is coming from the top of the frame, and you'll see that there are relatively high, high levels to the left and right, so there are two large lobes that are coming off kind of in the plane of the rotor. So that directionality that we observe in the near field models actually is in, we can see in the far field models as well. Here's a vertical section through that far field modeled space. The white lines show where foundations intersect with a vertical plane that we're looking at. Not surprisingly, you'll see high levels quite close to the foundations. Um, they're getting up to about 110 dB. And the sound field, also not very surprisingly, is quite cylindrical. Now that we have our completed far field model, we can compare the three different types of foundation to work out how the exact same wind turbine when mounted on them affects the surrounding sound field. The red line at the top is the, from the monopile. This is around about a kilometer away from the center of that wind farm. It has the highest level, particularly below around about um, 500 hertz, and you'll note that it has quite prominent peaks which relate to gear meshing frequencies. So the gear teeth are clattering away in the gearbox and those vibrations are going down through the tower into the foundation and propagating away as noise. You'll note that the gravity base, which is the blue line, also has relatively high levels, though the peaks aren't as prominent. This is because the um, gravity base is filled with that aggregate material and that's damping the, 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 the vibrations and tend to smear those um, peaks out. The green line is for the jacket and it's much lower than the other two. I've added a dotted line here which represents probable ambient noise for a sea state of 3 to 4 and you can see that the gravity base is actually below that for, for frequencies below around about uh, to 300 hertz. So if you're a kilometer away you wouldn't actually be able to hear a jacket based wind farm above the ambient noise. Effectively that noise would be masked. At around about 700 hertz would be all three turbines would be detectable. As you can see the gravity mounted turbine is actually coming up and has similar sorts of levels to the other two foundation types. We can now compare that sound field that we've modeled in the far field to the hearing of different uh, marine species and work out how far away they can hear the wind farm. Here we have an audiogram for a grey seal. Uh, if we were to invert this and normalize it, 
we would have something like an A-weighted curve for, for hearing, but for a seal. So the seal's threshold of hearing is best around be between about a one kilo, about 100 hertz and um, 100 kilohertz. So we impose that on our sound field and we work out how far away a, a seal would be able to actually detect um, each of the, our wind farms mounted on different types of foundation. At the top we have a gravity base. Uh, you can see that it can detect tones around about between 125 and 200 hertz and between 500 and 630 hertz fairly well at large distances up to 15 to 18 kilometers. At the bottom you can see the monopole. The seal will be able to detect fairly broad band noise between 125 and 630 hertz at ranges of above 15 kilometers. Whereas a jacket is much quieter, it will still be able to detect the turbine at quite large distances, but only in the band of 500 to 630 hertz. Outside of that, it would need to be within around about five, uh, 2 to, to 10 kilometers to be able to detect the wind turbine. We can do the same trick using an audiogram for, for a porpoise. Harbour porpoises hearing, um, they tend to detect much higher frequencies. So you note that at the low frequency and below 10 kilohertz, the, the hearing isn't quite as good as the, the seal that we previously looked at. And because they can't hear those tones at low frequency, it won't be able to detect any of the wind farms based on, on a gravity base, a jacket or a monopile um, below 400 hertz. It will have be able to detect it at, at around about 600 and 30 or 500 hertz. It'll be able to detect a monopole at quite large range and again that 630 hertz remember that relates to the gear meshing frequency so it's hearing one of the gear meshing tones. It would be able to hear it for similar distances from a, gra a gravity base and for a jacket it would have to be within around about um, 10 kilometers or closer to be able to detect the wind farm. So we've used a modelling approach to provide some valuable information on how different types of foundations affect the marine environment. It wouldn't have been possible to do this in the field because you wouldn't be able to find anywhere where the three um, different foundation types held the exact same wind turbine on them and was, were working in the exact same condition. It wouldn't be possible to find put your hydrophone in that sort of situation and actually measure it. This information is now helping to inform government policy and hopefully that will help in help us to install some more offshore wind turbines. I should also note that the noise produced by wind farms was found to be within the hearing, but it was too low to cause any of the marine mammals we studied, and indeed the fish we studied, um, any harm. If you'd like some further information on this work and the modelling we do, please go to our website at scienceengineering.com. If you'd like any information or any questions related to this presentation, please email us at info at This work is now a very detailed um, Scottish Government report, and if you're interested in looking into this in more detail, please go to the URL below and download a copy of the paper. Thank you for your time.